Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back. Good to see you all. Good to see uh, John Coleman, my partner, and Michelle Fabrica, our love and relationship coach. How are you doing, folks? Michelle, good. you look terrific today. How are you? I'm good, John. Thanks. Hi, Art. Yeah. Good Hi. to be here. And, and Art looks good. He's sitting in front of the beach, mm. in front of all those old cars. <laughs> Um, you know, it's interesting uh, in marriage and relationships. It's easy not to talk about the difficult stuff, isn't it? We we want it, we want it to. Maybe we did, we're in denial, or we just want it to go away. We just don't. The conversations about the difficult stuff are difficult, so we <laughs> often avoid talking about serious illness or you know death or something like that. Um, it's easier to talk about somebody else. Your Uncle Joe has got cancer, but it's hard for us to talk about with each other about cancer. Um, wh why do you suppose that is? Why do we sometimes avoid the, the difficult topics? Mm, yeah, well, uh, I mean, a lot of us don't have much experience talking about them, really. A lot of times it was all hush-hush when we were little and... We didn't know what was going on. And I think it, it, you know, unless we kind of are willing to step into it a little bit, it, it's it's kind of scary. It, it feels sad. It feels final. People have a lot of emotions and fears around it. So it it, it makes sense that it's not something that, you know, it's like, oh, maybe tomorrow we'll talk about this. You know, it's something to put off. But um, it's not good. You know, that's kind of why I want to talk about it here today, because I think it's important yeah, yeah. I think that, uh, John, uh, one of the words you, you used in the lead-in was uh, avoidance. Uh, mm. And uh, whether it has to do with uh, uh, somebody who has a, uh, a, a cancer, which is, uh, uh, you know, everybody thinks of death as, uh, as, that, as that road. But just in, in a normal uh, uh, serious illness that we expect sure. to recover from, people may not want to discuss it. Or how about just aging? You know, because sure. the knees don't work as well as they used to work. Yeah. So that long hike that you were going to take someplace and uh, you're ready for it, but your partner isn't. Uh, yeah. So what's the best way uh, or, or maybe you can give us some sense of best ways to bring it up as opposed proactively rather than wait for it's it, it's a problem. And now I have to deal with it in crisis mode. Uh, are there ways to maybe address this so that uh, uh, you, we can take some of the bite out of it? Uh, uh, as opposed to the crisis mode. Yeah, yeah. Well, th that's exactly it, Art, because when we don't talk about things and we wait for the crisis, we're really not prepared. We're not prepared emotionally. We're not prepared in a practical sense. So th this is actually more like the, the word proactive, right? To be, to do it in advance so you actually have yourself, you know, some sense of what, how you feel about it, how your partner feels about it what you would like things to happen. So anyway, yeah, let's get into it. So the first part is really about the feelings. Like, what are your feelings about it when you think about your own death, when you think about dying? How would you like that to go? What would you like to, who would you like to be with? Um, where do you want to be living? You know, different things around how do you manage, you know, changing, you know, getting older and the inevitable, right? So there's kind of like how you can talk about this. And this is not like one conversation to have, you know, let's just brave it out and talk about all these things, but let's just get the conversation started and to know how our, you know, how we each feel about it. And so there's like, you know, there's feelings about it. There's our, you know, our emotions and our, um, you know, even like, what do we want for our partner after we pass away, you know, down the road, we, what would you want for your partner? Do you want them to find someone else? Hopefully you do, right? You know, hopefully you yeah. want to release them to have happiness again. Have these kind of conversations. Yeah. yeah so, I'm so supposed the to is, my what, wife, by what, the way. When, when do you have these conversations? You say, you know what? Okay, we've been in a relationship for whatever period of time. On the first <laughs> Tuesday of every March. Okay, <laughs> let's talk about death, illness, right. and aging. And then maybe... We don't have to face it for five or ten years after that, but every, the first Tuesday of every March, uh, uh, <laughs> that's when we should have this conversation, even if there's nothing wrong in our lives. Mm. No, yeah, I mean, sometimes it comes up when we're facing it in for right. a family member or a friend, and then you know that's a good time to start talking about it. 
maybe not wait for that, obviously, but, um, you know, there's all kinds of spiritual, you know, components to it. Like, you know, what meaning do you associate with life, with death? Um, you know, do, what kind of connection do you have, if any, with people who've already passed away? And is that something that you want to cultivate or believe in or not? And it's okay either way. I'm not pro suggesting that we have to have some kind of spiritual component that we want to talk about. But if you do, share with your partner. Let them know, you know, how you feel about that. Yeah. But, you know, Art, you brought up aging. Um, I think aging is a, uh, it's not a serious illness, thank God. But it does involve um, our bodies kind of deteriorating. You know, you go from bad knees to a walker. Um, and all of a sudden, you can't live in that two-story home you raised your kids in. And, and so there's a lot of issues about getting older. Um, I think of um, a, a cousin, a, a family of cousins, who've had three or four people in different generations um, come up with Alzheimer's. And, you mm. know, it seems like that particular family, if they haven't been talking about what do you do when you get Alzheimer's, uh, you know, they really should, even the younger kids. Mm. Uh, so it, it there are lots of things to do with aging that aren't necessarily um, getting older. You know, it's, it's the stuff that happens when we start getting older. Right, right. Yeah. So, I mean, and that kind of brings up, you know, all these practical considerations, right? I mean, you know, the layout of your home, right? As you get older, you know, I know somebody, you know, somebody who moved into a one-story home, you know, when they got in their late 60s, because they just thought, you know, let's just, we're fine now, but let's just, let's make this transition now, you know, for example, something like yeah, that. Or, sure. you know, of course, there's wills, there's power of attorney, and there's end-of-life care, and you know, what do you want to do with your body? You know, funeral arrangements, burial, cremation, um, what's your living situation, you know, that kind of thing. And, and kind of caregiving. Who would you want to be caring for you? And what family members, perhaps, or what people could you hire? You know, just, I mean, I'm not saying that we start, you know, necessarily doing lots of things around it yet. I mean, obviously, yeah. the wills and the, and the power of attorney, those kinds of things, I would say, need to be done. You know, dot your I's and cross your T's there. But but some of these things are just about getting going with the conversation um, and getting um, one thing that comes to mind, too, is that if you're not legally married, um, there's limits to how much involvement you can have with your partner's, you know, medical, legal and financial affairs. And a lot of oh, people yeah. don't realize that. Yeah. So you might not be able to visit your partner in the hospital if you're not you know, officially married. Right. And you don't have any say in there, even though you might be the closest to them. So these things need to be set up and you need to make good arrangements point. for this kind of thing. You know, it's a very good very point. Good point. Um, uh, we're going to put down in the um, uh, in the notes uh, below uh, uh, this uh, video uh, that uh, John and I had a great uh, uh, interview with a uh, an attorney who puts together living trusts and wills and it, mm. right, this should be done probably if you have, especially if you have kids in your 30s and 40s, like what happens, who raises right. them, uh, or how do you pay for their education. But you can also indicate who has uh, uh, the final say on medical care, which one of your kids. And if you happen right. to be with a partner, which partner? Or you could say, you know what, we have a house together, uh, but it happens to be in uh, uh, his name. So... Uh, uh, if I, when I pass, it doesn't go to the estate and the kids. It goes right. to uh, Michelle, that kind sure. of thing. Uh, yeah. but let, let, let's let's ahead, face it, life, in, life, life is complicated, right? There's lots of all, all combination, combinations of things that happen to us, our partner, uh, marriage or not marriage. And, uh, you know, there's always a legal aspect to most of most everything. So, you know, I, I there's one last thing I wanted to brought up, and that is that um, I, having reached a, a good old ripe old rave age, uh, I've seen lots of relatives do just what we're talking about, which is have that conversation about, you know, the it's sometimes it's about the end days, but sometimes it's it's it takes place in the 60s when they don't expect to till dive until the eight, 80s. Mm. And that what comes in to my mind specifically is buying a cemetery plot and talking mm. about what I want. I want to be kind of, you know, I want to be uh, uh, cremated. Yeah, buried or I want to be uh, cremated or whatever. 
And I, I, in my at least in my family, when people start talking about like that, it seems that it's the kids who are denial. Oh, Dad, mm-hmm. don't you don't don't no, worry no, about that. Oh, my parents. No, oh, mom, really? Oh, please. <laughs> it's like talking about sex, right? <laughs> yeah. So sometimes, sometimes this conversation we're talking about. The serious conversation needs to be held with the kids more than your your I, spouse. And I'm your going partner. to move to another subject for a second that we touched upon, um, <laughs> it, it which is, is um, uh, I uh, have a friend uh, who, at about 50, lost her husband to a, a rare form of cancer. Uh, he went in a period of about seven or eight months, and uh, she was a a, a cantor, uh, uh, and. Um, uh, had some uh, really and, and and did counseling and things like that anyway. And during this period of time, um, she said goodbye to her husband, but they talked about it openly. And uh, mm. as a result of it, she wrote a book called The Healing Hand on how to say mm. goodbye, especially when you know somebody is ailing and deteriorating towards end of life. Uh, and in fact, I think we'll put uh, down a note. Uh, uh, her name is Susan Deutsch. Uh, I knew her husband fairly well because I practiced Tai Chi with him probably for about two years. Uh, and he was a coach to me as well. And uh, so uh, you can do, there, there are actually guides to help you either say goodbye or to, to deal with somebody who is having a significant issue. But uh, this, yeah. whole, this, whole, this whole subject uh, of uh, uh, how do you handle aging or illness or things like that is uh, really an important one. And Michelle, thank you for um, uh, helping us explore that today. Yeah, yeah. I just have one more thing I want to say around it too, and that you kind of touched on it as well, you know, in terms of saying goodbye, but are you complete with the conversations with the people in your life? Do they know what they mean to you? Have you expressed what, you know, what you still want to say to them and, you know, family, friends, colleagues, it's, it's actually never too late to start these kind of, you know, even like, wow, I really appreciated working, you know, working with you. Even, you know, even if you're totally healthy, it's like do we, we withhold sometimes because we think we have so much time to speak this, but yeah. um, we don't even know how much time we have. Right. So and, and what's what's really wonderful is that on the other side of all these sort of conversations and preparations, there's so much more ease and peace of mind. And, and the reality that we're prepared and we have some confidence that we know what our partner wants, we know what family members, you know, they're informed. Um, we make it easier for them. We make it easy for our, you know, grown children to handle it, whatever. So um, it just, it can bring a lot more connection and intimacy and, and love. So um, yeah, we'll leave it with that. Wow, well, you've wrapped it up very nicely. Great conversation, thank you. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.